Welcome to TOK Today. I'm Daniel, and in my essay notes and videos about essay number five, that's the one about custodians, I've generally defined custodians of knowledge as, as bodies or systems that protect and preserve knowledge. However, custodians could have a slightly different meaning. If a person is taken into custody, it generally means that they're being held and imprisoned by the legal system and that they don't have the right to leave and, and access to them is tightly controlled. And we could also think of custodians of knowledge as incarcerators of knowledge, locking knowledge away from other knowers and, and tightly controlling access to that knowledge. In the 16th century, a building on this site contained some of the most closely guarded knowledge in the world. It was closely guarded because it held the secrets to untold riches. It was closely guarded because the acquisition and production of that knowledge had been hard won and very expensive. It was closely guarded because this knowledge could allow the knower to dominate the Western world. In the 16th century, the building that stood on this site was the Lisbon Map Factory. In the 16th century, the age of discovery was in full swing, and Portugal was at the forefront of maritime exploration. The Portuguese were making unprecedented voyages to uncharted territories such as India, Africa and Brazil, seeking to expand their influence and acquire exotic goods. Navigation charts and maps, colloquially known as cartash or portland charts, were invaluable tools for these journeys. They were much more than mere pieces of paper. They were strategic assets that held state secrets. These charts represented years of hard-won knowledge. The Portuguese had developed sophisticated techniques for cartography and celestial navigation, such as the use of the astrolabe and cross staff. This knowledge was the result of substantial investment, both in terms of financial resources and human lives. As Portugal's competitors like Spain and later England and France sought similar advantages in exploration and trade, the possession of these navigational aids offered a critical edge. Keeping these charts secret helped maintain Portuguese supremacy in oceanic exploration. The charts often contained information about newly discovered trade routes, such as the route around the Cape of Good Hope to India, and the locations of valuable commodities like spices, gold and ivory. Revealing these routes would not only expose them to competitors, but it could also lead to piracy, threatening the monopoly Portugal was keen to establish and maintain. Finally, the strategic implications of these charts extended to national security. They included details about fortifications, anchorages and tides in recently conquered territories. Dissemination of this data could compromise the Portuguese position in these new lands, making them vulnerable to attack or subterfuge by rival nations. The secrecy around navigational charts played a role in diplomatic negotiations, Access to specific cartographic information could be granted as a bargaining chip in treaties or alliances, a valuable concession to be bestowed upon a trusted ally rather than being made available to all. In summary, the secrecy surrounding oceanic navigational charts in, the 16th, in 16th century Portugal was not mere paranoia, it was a calculated and strategic decision to protect national interests. These charts were the keys to untold wealth, influence and power, and Portugal went to great lengths to ensure that this knowledge remained closely guarded. So, from this real example, we can develop some TOK points and knowledge arguments. We're arguing that whether we need custodians of knowledge partly depends upon roles. Now, these roles have three main elements. The role of the custodian of knowledge, the role of the knowledge producer, and of course, the role of the knower. Let's first look at the role of the custodian of knowledge. In this case, we're arguing that the custodians of knowledge protect knowledge from being shared. They keep it isolated, exclusive, confidential and secret. There are other equally valid definitions of custodians of knowledge that I've discussed in my earlier videos. I'll link in the video description. 
Next, we can look at the role of the knowledge producer. We can think about who created the knowledge and why they created it and how they created it. In the case of the 16th century maps, they were created by the Portuguese state at great expense. They were created to give Portugal commercial, financial and military power. The position in a power hierarchy of the knowledge producer, how they produced it and the potential use of consequences of the knowledge produced will influence whether we need a custodian of knowledge and the type of custodian of knowledge needed. Finally, we can look at the role of the knower, or should I say knowers, because there are different categories of knowers. This is linked to our definition of custodians of knowledge, in this case as a ring-fencing exclusionary custodian. Therefore, there are those knowers who have legitimate and authorised access to the knowledge. In our case of the 16th century maps, this would be the officers in the Portuguese navy. And then there are those knowers who are outside of the legitimate and authorised custodial circle of knowledge. In the case of the 16th century maps, this might be governments and navies that were competing with Portugal. As such, in terms of knowers, we can think of who wants to know and why do they want to know. Which neatly brings us to the concept of what unites all of the three roles, the custodians of knowledge, the producer of knowledge and the knower. And when trying to answer the question of whether we need custodians of knowledge, this central concept will help to bring all of the arguments together. And that central uniting concept is one of purpose. When considering whether we need custodians of knowledge, we can ask ourselves, what's the purpose of the custodian of knowledge? What's the purpose of the production of that knowledge? And what's the purpose of the person who produced that knowledge. And when we start to answer the questions of purpose, we start to come up with a range of answers as to whether we need custodians of knowledge. If you want to know more about essay number five, May 24, that's Custodians of Knowledge, be sure to check out my earlier videos and blog posts on this title, a link in the video description. And if you want super supportive help with this essay, then check out the Talk Today essay guidance notes, link also in the video description. Those notes are like having a TOK teacher with you, helping you. Now, if you found this video useful, I would be very grateful for a like, and if you want to get more TOK content, then please press subscribe. And if you would like to reciprocate your gratitude, then you can buy me a coffee. Link in the video description. Many thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one. Stay talktastic, my friend.